Chapter 7, question 16, is asking, in each of the following reactions, identify the reactant that is oxidized and the reactant that is reduced. So there are a couple things to unpack here. First is the word reactant. If in any reaction you'll have the stuff on the left of the arrow, then the arrow, which is just signifying a kaboom that the reaction is happening, and then the stuff on the right of the arrow. So the stuff on the left of the arrow are called the reactants, and the stuff on the right of the arrow are called the products. So here, they're only talking about reactants, so we don't have to worry about the products. In each of these, we want to know which reactant is oxidized and which reactant is reduced. So first oxidized and then reduced. So, so much for the word reactant. Now let's unpack the word oxidized and reduced. In some... In some, uh, in some reactions, whatever individual atoms start with a certain charge and end with a certain charge. The difference between the beginning and the end is what other atoms they're stuck to. That's the case in some reactions. In other reactions, though, the actual charge on an element will change. For example, iron starts with a 3 plus and ends with a 2 plus in that reaction. When the charge on an element changes, as you go from reactants to products, that's when you have oxidation and reduction happening. You can remember what oxidation and reduction are through a little mnemonic device. It's called oil rig. The oil stands for oxidation is losing electrons. Oxidation happens when you lose electrons. Losing is like a negative sign. Electrons have a negative charge. So it's like minus and minus. If you lose negative charge, the element actually becomes more positive. So if, as you go from the left of the arrow to the right of the arrow, the, the charge on an element becomes more positive, then it's oxidation. Reduction is when you gain electrons, when you gain negative charge. And so if you gain negative charge, hopefully it makes sense that the element would become more negative. It doesn't have to be negative itself, it just has to become more negative. So for example, look at the iron here, starts at three plus, ends at two plus, it's becoming more negative as you go from the left to the right side of the reaction. So if the element becomes more positive, it's oxidation. If it becomes more negative, it's reduction. So that's something to take away from this and we'll just write those notes in here. So oxidation is when an element becomes more positive, and reduction, that's when an element becomes more negative, as you go from the left to the right. Okay, so we've unpacked that prompt. Now, in these reactions, the first thing we're going to want to do is to establish what the charge is on each element. And then after we do that, we'll see whether it's becoming more positive or more negative. So in A, we have zinc and we have chlorine. Now, if an element is ever all by itself, the charge is whatever is in the top right. So at the top right of zinc, nothing is written, and so zinc starts with a zero charge. In the, in, for chlorine, chlorine is all by itself. It's not combined with any other elements no other boxes on the periodic table, and so the charge is whatever's in the top right. Nothing is written in the top right, and so the charge here is going to be zero. So those are the charges on the left side of the reaction. On the right side of the reaction, the elements are in compounds, and so they are going to have charges. Now chlorine, when chlorine is in a compound, it has the charge. It's listed in the periodic table. We've seen this before. Anything in group 7a, where chlorine is, will have a charge of negative 1. So chlorine here has a charge of negative 1. Zinc is a transition metal, and so we don't really know the charge that it has, but we can figure it out by making a little algebraic equation. We know that the overall charge on the molecule is whatever is written in the top right, which here is nothing, or 0. So all the charges between zinc and chlorine have to add up to zero. Okay, now I have two, we have two elements, we have zinc and we have chlorine, and I'm going to separate those by a plus sign. 
We only have one zinc, because nothing is written in the bottom right, and so it's an implied one. And we don't know the charge on zinc. So the way you say I don't know it in math is X. We have two chlorines. And we know that the charge on chlorine is negative 1. That's what we saw from the periodic table. So we can solve for this and say, OK, x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. Cancels on the left. And x equals positive 2. So the charge on zinc at the, on the right side of this equation equals positive 2. Positive 2. So zinc went from being 0 to positive 2. It became more positive, and we saw that that is oxidation. So zinc is oxidized. Chlorine went from 0 to negative 1. That's becoming more negative, and we saw that if something becomes more negative, it's reduced. So chlorine is reduced. And that's it for A. All right, B. So here we have three elements. We have chlorine, we have sodium, and we have bromine. All right, if anything's ever by itself, the charge is whatever's written in the top right. Nothing's written in the top right of chlorine, and so chlorine starts with a zero charge. Let me actually just make a little table here to make this very clear. And notice we're also keeping a line in between the reactants on the left of the arrow and the products on the right. Okay, so chlorine starts with a zero charge. Sodium, sodium is in a compound. And when an element is in a compound, we can refer to the periodic table. Sodium is sort of at the left of the periodic table. And because it's in group 1A, it has a plus 1 charge. So sodium will have a plus 1 charge. And then bromine. So bromine is in a compound here. It's paired with another thing. It's not by itself. So we'll look at it on the periodic table. It's over on the right side because it is in group 7A it's going to have a charge of negative 1. So bromine will have a charge of negative 1. So much for the left side of the equation. Now let's go to the right side. Sodium. Sodium is in a compound. Because it's in a compound, we'll get its charge from the periodic table. Because sodium is in column 1A or group 1A, it will have a plus 1 charge. For chlorine. Chlorine, again, is in that compound, and so we'll get its charge in the periodic table. Chlorine is in group 7A, so it's going to have a negative 1 charge. Last but not least, bromine. Bromine here is by itself. If something is ever by itself, the charge is the same as whatever number is written in the top right. Nothing is written there, and so the charge on bromine here is 0. Okay, so now chlorine goes from being 0 to being negative 1. It's becoming more negative. We saw that if something becomes more negative, it's reduced. So we could write that chlorine, chlorine is reduced. Sodium. Sodium goes from being positive 1 to being positive 1. It neither becomes more positive nor more negative, so it's neither reduced nor oxidized. So sodium is neither reduced nor oxidized. Okay, how about bromine? Bromine goes from being negative one to positive, or negative one to zero. Now I know that zero isn't positive, but it's more positive than negative 1. So bromine becomes more positive. It goes from negative 1 to 0. It becomes more positive, and so it is oxidized. So bromine is oxidized. OK, it's a little crowded there. But chlorine is reduced. Sodium is neither oxidized nor reduced. And bromine is oxidized. So that would be B. All right, let's try C. Same procedure. Here we have two elements. We have lead and we have oxygen. So let's make a little table. 
and you always want to separate the left side of the arrow, the reactants, from the right side, the products. Now on the left side, lead is in a compound. Lead can actually have several different charges. It's like a transition metal in that way. So we don't actually know the charge on lead specifically here. We have to figure that out. So we can use, make a little algebraic equation. The, the compound is PBO. The overall charge has to be whatever is written in the top right. And since nothing is written in the top right, the overall charge has to add up to zero. We have two elements, lead and oxygen. We're going to separate those with a plus sign. We have one lead. How do you know? Because at the bottom right, no number is written. We're not sure about the charge on lead, and so I write x. That's how you say I'm not sure in math. We have one oxygen. How do I know? Because at the bottom right of oxygen, nothing is written, so 1. And we know from the periodic table, because oxygen's in group 6a, it has a negative 2 charge. So this has a negative 2 charge. So we can use this equation to figure out the charge on lead. 1 times x is x. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. Cancels on the left. x equals positive 2. And so that is the charge on lead at the very beginning. So lead starts with a positive 2 charge. OK, next, oxygen. Oxygen is in this compound also, and so we can use the periodic table to figure out the charge on it. It's in group 6a, so the charge will be negative 2. All right, so much for the reactants. How about the products? On the right side, lead is all by itself, so the charge is whatever is in the top right corner. Nothing is written there, and so the charge will be 0. On the right, oxygen is also all by itself, and so the charge will be whatever is in the top right corner. Since nothing is written there, it will be 0. So that's the first step, finding the charges on both sides of the arrow. Now let's think about oxidation and reduction. As you go from the left to the right side, lead goes from being positive 2 to 0. Now 0 isn't negative, but it is more negative than positive 2. It's a, a more negative number than positive 2 is. So lead becomes more negative, so it is reduced. So we could say lead is reduced. Oxygen goes from negative 2 to 0. Now I know 0 is not a positive number, but it's more positive than negative 2. So oxygen, by going from negative 2 to 0, becomes more positive. And as we saw, when you become more positive, you're oxidized. So oxygen here is oxidized. So that is the oxidation reduction in that equation. Now D is more straightforward. It's really nice because they write the charges for you on each of these elements, so you don't have to go figuring them out. We have iron and we have tin. The symbol for tin is Sn. It comes from the Latin word stanum. This is one of those elements that the Romans knew about. OK, we'll separate in our mind the left and the right side of the e equation. Everything on the left are the reactants, the right are the products. So iron, we can see, starts with a plus 3 charge. Iron is all by itself. Whenever an element is all by itself, it's charged with whatever is written in the top right. And plus 3 is written in the top right there. Tin starts with a positive 2 charge. That's the number that's written in the top right of tin. Iron ends with a positive 2 charge, and tin, oops, and tin ends with a positive 4 charge. So iron goes from being positive 3 to positive 2. Now even though positive 2 is a positive number, it's more negative than positive 3. So, like if you were to have a number line, 0 is here, let's say positive 2 is here and positive 3 is here, you'd have to go in the negative direction in order to get to positive 2. So iron is become, the charge on iron is becoming more negative, and because of that, we know it iron is reduced. So we could say iron iron is reduced. Tin. Tin 
goes from being positive 2 to positive 4. So it's becoming more positive, and we saw that when you become more positive, that's called being oxidized. So tin here is oxidized. And so that's how that reaction works. So oxidation and reduction happen when the charge on an element changes as you go from the left of the arrow to the right of the arrow. It doesn't happen in all reactions, but when it does, it's called oxidation and reduction. When the charge becomes more negative, it's something is, an element is reduced, and when the charge becomes more positive, an element is oxidized.